My name is Mary Hilger. This speech is Love and Discipline, the Dynamic Duo, D Squared. Many of us see a vision for our children as parents. Maybe we're not parents. Maybe we're spiritual or emotional parents. Maybe we've never actually had children ourselves, but we're teachers or mentors where we guide young people, perhaps foster parents, uh, we, we guide others. We, we all want our children to be successful, but what is success? Success is our children get good grades in school, they go off to college, they get a good degree, they get married, a nice man or woman, and then they have grandchildren and they get a stable job and they have a nice home with two-car garage and maybe a couple pets, and that's successful, right? Right? Are they always happy when they achieve that? Not always. No. I want to present to you today something different, that maybe success is virtuous characters in our children. But what does it take as parents to raise children with virtuous characters? Love and discipline. The dynamic duo, D squared, DD. Love and discipline. It's a tool I'm going to give you. Let's talk about love first. How do we love our children? Because sometimes they're just unlovable. Sometimes it's difficult to love our children. Then we choose to love. See, selfishness is the opposite of love. So love is a choice. Love is a decision. Love is more than a feeling. And love can be a gift from God, or we can get help from God. We love our child, we love our children. We love them daily or weekly, depending on how old they are, how dependent they are. Three-year-olds, five-year-olds, eight-year-olds, ten-year-olds, twelve-years-old, they need that daily encouragement. Listen to them. Find out what's on their hearts. Find out what's in their minds. Give them five minutes a day. Five for fifty. They say fifty words, you say five. Listen. Don't try to push your agenda on them yet. <laughs> just listen. Just find out where they're at. And then you can maybe gently guide them every day and, and give them ideas and give them suggestions. And What are some other ideas? Play with them. Find out what they like to do and spend that quality time with them. Look at them in the eye and just be with them. Sometimes you don't have to say anything. Just put your arm around them when you're watching TV. Scratch their backs. Tell them honestly what you think. I am proud of you when you do this. I am happy when you do this. I am disappointed when you do this. Talk to them. Tell them what you really think. They want to know you. They want to be friends with you. That's love. What might hold us back from love? Selfishness. I don't have the time for my kids. I've got to work. No, career's not bad. Career's fine. But if you have children, you need to you need to manage both. You need to make time for both. Maybe you can go to 80% time in your career. Maybe you can go to 50% time in your career, whatever job it is. Maybe you can get a different job that allows you to be home more. Maybe you travel in your career and your kids go weeks without seeing you. That's okay if they're 25 and you can just talk to them on the phone, but younger, you know, depending on how virtuous your children are. If you're noticing you're not happy about your children's character, maybe you need to love them more and be with them. Well, you know, you need an exercise schedule and you need money. you got to make lots of money. you got to have a nice house. you got to have nice cars. you got to have nice clothes. you got to dress your children in beautiful things or else people might judge them at school and they might think that you're poor and they might think that you don't have enough money and that's a bad thing. You can't say those things. Love them and give up some of yourself because in the end they're going to be virtuous because they saw your example. So love is just being their friend. Is that all parents are supposed to be? No. Parents are supposed to mentor. They're supposed to teach. And part of teaching is discipline. Ooh, I don't like that word discipline. I don't like to discipline my children. I just want to be their friend. That's great, but what if your children are selfish? 
What if your children want to do bad things? How will you guide them? How will you teach them? Oh, I'll just tell them. Really? Because sometimes consequences, in fact, a lot of times consequences are needed. Because children don't have the strength of character yet to do the right thing. After 265 times of consequences, then they begin to do the right thing, but it's not something they just do naturally if you leave them alone. What kind of consequences? Discipline. Does it always have to be bad? Does it always have to be negative? I'm going to spank you if you do that again. Well, think of some other things. What's important to your children? Candy. You can't have that candy until you eat all your supper. What else is important to your children? Movies. You can't have that movie until you go potty. What else is important to your children? Uh, iPhones. I'm taking your iPhone away until you learn to come back at midnight, when I've asked you to, or 10 p.m., when I've asked you to. That is a curfew. That is the rule. Cars. You don't have car privileges anymore. See, those are consequences. They don't have to hate you. It doesn't have to be a big battle, a big argument. Discipline doesn't have to be negative. It's creating borders and boundaries. It's saying when you go outside in the playground, here is the fence you're not allowed to go beyond. And then the children feel comfortable to go right up to that fence and just play comfortably. They feel free. But if there's no fence, they don't. They stay closer to the school because they don't really know how far to go. They don't know where the line is. They don't know where the boundary is. Teach them. Mentor them. Discipline is bonding. Find out what they need and give them that bonding love between the two of you where you teach them. You teach them to be good. You teach them to have a good character. Sometimes it's rewards, like candy. Sometimes it's consequences, like you don't have the car tonight. You don't have the car for a week. You don't, I, I can't take you to soccer practice for a week because you did this and that and that, and that was rude to your mother, that was rude to your father. Love and discipline. What might hold us back from discipline? Oh, my mother was too strict. Oh, she was so, she was, my father was too strict. I have these horrible memories. They used to lick the tar out of me. They used to hit me with a leather belt. They used to embarrass me in front of my other siblings. They used to embarrass me in front of my friends. They, and maybe we have even more abusive memories. Maybe so, someone in our families were alcoholics. Maybe somebody in our family were drug addicts. Maybe, maybe we were abused when we were children, either emotionally or physically or sexually. And we don't want to pass that on. We want to go the other way. I'm just going to be a friend. I'm just going to be happy. I'm just going to be nice to my children. We are not doing our children a favor by swinging to the opposite end of the pendulum. Allow yourselves to be healed. Allow yourselves to find the balance between love and discipline and forgive the people in your past. Forgiving doesn't mean they were right. It means you are letting go of the poison. And you are finding a balance for your children. Love and discipline, the dynamic duo, D squared. Because what's important in, their children, in your children's lives? Making a lot of money? Is every single doctor and lawyer and whatever other career makes money, are they all happy? Really? Do they all have great marriages and great kids? Are they all just, wow, <laughs> doctors and wealthy people are the happiest people I know. Really? No, we don't have that connection, do we? It's a lie. Virtuous characters make people happy. Controlling ourselves make people happy. I was watching TV once with my daughter. She was four years old at the time. And she said, Mommy, is that a bad man? I said, yeah. I said, but I said um, to her, I said, Ar, what makes a bad man? She said, I don't know. I said, are there bad babies? Are there bad boys and they just grow up to be bad men? Are they born that way? She said, no. I said, well, maybe their parents didn't teach them to control themselves. Because isn't that what a bad man is? Somebody who doesn't control themselves or a bad woman? Yeah. I said, then isn't it a good thing that mummy teaches you to control yourselves by to control yourself by giving you timeouts? Yeah. Yeah, see, your children will love you when we teach them love and discipline. The dynamic duo. I'm giving you a tool for your pocket. Love and discipline. D D D squared. Keep it and use it off.